Congressman Peter King is uh, rep- he's a Republican representing Long Island, the former chairman of the uh, House Homeland Security Committee. Peter, uh, welcome back to the show, Congressman. Always great to have you with us. Joe, no, always great to be with you. You know, you're such a great daddy. Frankie Five Burrows tells me right before we go back on the air that you were there at the finish line for your daughter. She ran the Long Island Marathon after all that she went through, and you being the great dad that you are, sir, you were there at the finish line. Tell us about that, if you would. Yeah, that, that was great. Uh, Erin just finished radiation about seven, uh, wow. seven weeks ago. Wow. She's been operated on in January. She's diagnosed with breast cancer in December. Yeah. And uh, she never run a uh, long-distance race before. But she got herself into training, and she uh, ran the half marathon. It's 13.1 miles. I would have no problem, problem with the point one. <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, she, uh, it was rainy, too. It was rainy, and it was windy, wow. and it was cold. Wow. And uh, she came across. It was, uh, she did it in you know, two hours, 18 minutes. Uh, not great, but it's, uh, she was more than, to me, to be in that condition, yes. to overcome radiation, and to be able to do the 13.1 miles was really great. And. So I was at the finish line, Rosemary with the finish line. Oh, man. Uh, Every husband, John, was there. His daughter, Katie May, met her about 20 yards out. They ran in together. It was great. I mean, you know, got a great reception from the crowd. The announcer made a uh, you know a big deal out of it, which I'm really glad he did. And she was she was not even bleeding at all. She was in uh, really, really good shape. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, it was, it was a proud moment. But more important, not a real a sign. You know, she's back and stronger yeah, now. Yeah. God bless you for that. That's that. That is an inspirational story, uh, Congressman. Uh, tell us the latest in terms of the situation in Israel, please. Well, I mean, Israel is under fire. I mean, they're literally under fire. You know, the rockets are yeah. coming in now. They, yeah. There's some kind of a, a truce that's been arrived at, but a truce over there means nothing. I mean, I, I've been there. I was there in 2014, actually, with David Patterson and Rabbi Patasnik and New York uh, Board of Rabbis. When the, you know, there was a real serious fighting going on. And it ended like a day or two. I think the day we got there or the day after that, we got there. That's not why it ended. But, he, but again, I said, oh, this is good news. And they said, no, it'll start again soon. I mean, there's just no – you can't trust Hamas. You can't trust those Islamist groups over there. And uh, Israel is literally under siege. And anyone who's ever been there, the first thing that strikes you is how small it is. I mean, Israel cannot have a bad day. If they do, they could be destroyed. I mean, I, God, no one wants any country to be attacked, certainly not ours. But as bad as 9-11 was, there was never a question of our country being destroyed. If there was a preemptive, successful attack against Israel, that could be it. It could be all over for them. So they don't have any margin of error. And so that's a reality. And then you have Iran is acting up again in the uh, Middle East. And, uh, yeah, people here in this country are undermining Israel. Sometimes you read news accounts, you uh, – would think that you know, the Israelis are the ones who were uh, at fault in this situation. Well, they've done everything over the years to try to work with the Palestinians, to try to make accommodation, and every time they take a step, yeah. try to take a step forward, they get punched in the mouth. So it's uh, this is really, really difficult. Uh, not to name drop, but I remember talking to Bill Clinton after he left office. Mm. He said his biggest disappointment was not Get, being able to get Arafat to close the deal. They would be so close, he'd be getting virtually everything he wanted, and then the last minute, they couldn't do it because they cannot accept Israel being, the, uh, being there, being a, uh, a real country, and yeah. having uh, sovereignty. And I'm, I'm looking here on Twitter, to your point, Congressman uh, King, uh, this is from the uh, Twitter feed of Israel Defense Forces, that they they say Iran was responsible for... Trans- they, they had money transferred from Iran to Hamas and Islamic Jihad. The funds were used to build the hundreds of rockets recently fired at Israel. And I'm wondering, and I asked this yesterday, I wonder, this, is this why the president is sending uh, warships uh, into that area, do you think? Well, that could be one of the reasons. Another one is Iran is threatening to... Uh, uh, start with uh, uranium activity. Uh, yep. They see, and their their excuses that because we're putting sanctions on them, or because we're out of the uh, nuclear agreement, that they're going to uh, start taking retaliatory action. It's, <laughs> they're saying that they're going to you know, uh, begin uh, processing, but it's not going to violate the agreement. Listen, that agreement was the worst one that the U.S. Well, actually, the U.S. did not enter into it. President Obama did it. Never went to the Senate for any kind of approval. And so it's all there. Also, listen, we had I, – I was at a hearing yesterday in Staten Island on uh, security for New York, and John Miller, the deputy commissioner, was testifying yeah. about the real threat we have in New York from Hezbollah, which is constantly out 
out there uh, scoping out targets, scout, scoping out different uh, facilities here in New York, and ultimately Hezbollah is under the control of Iran. So Iran is a worldwide danger. It really is. And I think the worst thing that President one of the worst things President Obama did was entering into that agreement with Iran, somehow giving the world the impression that we could trust Iran. And, and as a result of that, you had European countries immediately going to make a fast buck and signing financial agreements with Iran. So uh, now this is uh, uh, Iran is the main bad actor in, in the Middle East. There's no doubt about it. You, and that behind a lot of the trouble. See, that's what I've been trying to talk about the last couple of days. And in a nutshell, in a couple of minutes, there's Congressman Peter King. Uh, just in a capsule, j- just telling us exactly why Iran is dangerous, why things are happening there, and and this in- in insanity of these rockets just being lobbed into Israel for no reason except for hate uh, for our friends in the Middle East. And we appreciate that, Congressman. Matter of fact, th- I, and again, Congressman, thanks because everybody else is like obsessed in the House to take down Donald Trump. Now they're going to hold Bill Barr in contempt of Congress. This is they should not be concentrating on this. We should be protecting our friends like Israel. Exactly what you've been talking about, sir. Absolutely, we're talking about the survival of our closest ally in the Middle East, <sighs> which is the most dangerous section of the world right now. As far as uh, uh, going after Attorney General Barr, he's a man of great integrity, and I think one of the real reasons to go after him is one is they have to divert attention from the fact that Mueller cannot find any collusion. For two and a half years, we were told that. Donald Trump was an agent of, of Russia. He was involved with Russia. Turns out that was, that's totally out the window, not even close. So in that. And then we know that Attorney General Barr is, going, is beginning an investigation of the Democratic operation uh, against President Trump as far as starting this investigation on false pretenses. And the uh, fact that uh, not even so much the Democrats as the uh, people in the intelligence agency, people in the Justice Department, people in the FBI, uh, they began this investi- uh, this whole inquiry, this whole persecution mm. of the Trump campaign based on, on nothing. And was the Obama administration behind that? Was anybody in the White House aware of that? Was it John Brennan? Was it Jim Comey? Was Oof. it McCabe? Was it Stroke? Who was it? I mean, as I can tell you, I, I was on the Intelligence Committee, and Comey kept telling us this unprecedented intrusion by uh, you know, the Russian government into this campaign. And I figured there must be something there. And... And then as the more you looked at it and, and more they had to explain themselves behind closed doors, mm-hmm. there was nothing, yeah. nothing ever yeah. at all that warranted that type of investigation. Yeah, Congressman Peter King with Joe Piscopo on the radio, 734. We've let, before we let you go, Congressman, always appreciate your valuable time, especially this early in the morning, sir. Venezuela, uh, can you give us an update in terms of where we are there, sir? Yeah, uh, I think that uh, many people are hoping that uh, – uh, Dara would be overthrown last week, even though it's not even an overthrow because he doesn't deserve to be in power anyway, even win the election. But uh, I still think it's a matter of time. We have to keep our eye on the ball. And again, Iran, Venezuela, we can go through so many issues in the world which are far more important than a stunt, of, not a stunt, it's really cruel act of going after Bill Barr, who's done nothing but do his job. And uh, he's standing up against these onslaughts of subpoenas that are coming in. The yeah. fact is that uh, you know, it, Republicans went after Eric Holder for good reason, but it was uh, over two years before they finally brought an impeachment resolution, hearing after hearing after hearing, giving him every opportunity to come up with the uh, information that was needed about the, uh, the shooting of the border guard. Uh, so in any event, uh, now this is wrong. I think American people will see through it, but we have real issues in the world. We have life and death issues yeah. that are not being addressed. Congressman King, we appreciate it. Our best to uh, Rosemary and to Aaron, certainly. And uh, we're due for a sit-down. I think we're, we're going to be in Brooklyn for a little sit-down, Congressman. We'll be reaching out to you respectfully, sir. Uh, you, me, That's Dan it. Donovan, Frankie I, Five Burrows, huh? I, I heard from your criminal defense lawyer, Dan Donovan, and he uh, <laughs> told me that we're going to be meeting in uh, Brooklyn. I, I'm still trying to find an Irish bar somewhere we go to in Rockland. Anyway, we'll go I'll with you. We'll corn, come on, it's corned beef or lasagna. Come on, there's no contest. Yeah. Okay, come on. Thanks, Congressman. Thank you so much.